Congressman, Chief Meteorologist Jamie Martin. We have more showers moving into the region right now on ABC 57 First Morning Doppler Radar. Quite a few showers out there right around Goshen right now along the bypass. Another batch out here heading up 31 right now heading towards Berrien Springs. We'll be in Berrien Springs here as we continue our way through the next few minutes. Fair Plain 519, Benton Harbor at 524, Benton Heights at 525. So we're tracking some evening showers, a better chance of showers and storms for the overnight hours. I'll have the very latest with forecast track coming up. ABC 57 News at 5 starts now. Covering South Bend, Elkhart, and all of Michiana, this is ABC 57 News at 5. New tonight, a coroner says that a child who was at a Michiana daycare suffocated to death. We are live in Michigan City with those breaking details. Plus, an Osceola couple found shot dead in their home. Police are calling it a murder-suicide, and neighbors say they're shocked. And arrested and now charged with felony crimes like racketeering, we are following a multi-county drug bust that isn't over just yet. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Dorman. My co-anchor Kim Chappell will join us from the football field for Football 101 at Notre Dame in just a few minutes. But first, our top story here at 5. Neighbors on one street in Osceola woke up to a lot of commotion this morning. Police responded to an apparent murder-suicide on West Rogers Street. The coroner tells ABC 57 News they found two people dead inside that home. ABC 57's Megan Schiller was out there on that street talking with neighbors all morning long. She joins us live outside the St. Joseph County Metro Homicide Unit with the very latest night. And Megan, what new details do you have for us at this hour? Well, Brian, police have now confirmed that this is an apparent murder suicide. They say that they have identified the couple as 56 year old Terry Von Blon and her husband, 61 year old Mel Von Blon. They say that they died of apparent gunshot wounds, but at this hour, we are not sure who killed who yet. It was an older guy and an older girl, both kind of short, but they have lived here for about a year, year and a half, and we've only talked to them once. Matt Graham lives directly across the street from this home on West Rogers Street. Police tape now lines the property and the Metro homicide van sat outside for hours. Neighbors tell me they are disturbed that the couple who rarely spoke is now dead. No, I haven't really ever heard anything from them. They're all real quiet people. Usually in their house, they're gone. Neighbors tell me a quiet couple lived inside and police identified the deceased as 56 year old Terry Von Blon and her husband, 61 year old Mel Von Blon. Police say they died from apparent gunshot wounds, but they wouldn't say who killed who first. One neighbor tells me the husband was just out cutting the grass last night. This remains an ongoing investigation. And continue to stick with ABC 57 News because more information will likely surface tomorrow. That's when the autopsies are scheduled to be completed and we will have more of an idea of who was the true victim in this case. Reporting live in South Bend, Megan Schiller, ABC 57 News. New at five, more problems with the South Bend Common Council. Councilman Derek Dieter confirmed to ABC 57 News that he filed a police report today against fellow Councilman Henry Davis Jr. ABC 57's Megan Schiller talked with Davis by phone about this latest development. He says he doesn't think the police report will affect him in the slightest. In fact, Davis says that he doesn't get what Dieter's doing and doesn't think that he gets what he's doing either. The police report is reportedly over a comment that Davis made to Dieter about his wife. Today, Council President Oliver Davis had this to say about the conflict. We have a lot more important things to be doing in our council at this present time. We're in the middle of budget season. We're in the middle of taking care of our streets taking care of vacant abandoned homes, making sure the grass is cut, and protecting our city from all of the crime. And I hope that when council members have these kind of disagreements about comments that were said during meetings or even after meetings, that they can have breakfast, have lunch, have dinner, and resolve some of those matters outside of council time. Yeah, in fact, the council president, Oliver Davis, going on more to explain that he doesn't expect that all of the common council members will be friends, but he does expect them to respect one another. Well, this news is just coming into the ABC 57 newsroom. We now know more about what caused a child's death Monday night at a daycare in Michigan City. We are learning that the daycare, Tr uh, Trisha's Playhouse and Daycare, is under investigation for not following state regulations. ABC 57's Emily Evans has been working on this story for us all day long. And Emily, I'm told that you just got off the phone with the county coroner. What is the very latest here tonight? 
Well, Brian, the LaPorte County coroner tells me the autopsy results just came in this afternoon, and he says five-year-old Amarion Williams died from asphyxia from hanging. He says an unused jump rope was tied to a piece of wood on the playground at Trisha's Playhouse and daycare, and the boy somehow managed to hang himself from it. The coroner says the death has been ruled accidental. It's a very sad situation and my heart goes out to the parents of the children. Just shortly after noon Monday, one mother and father's worst nightmare became reality when they learned their five-year-old son was dead. Family members told ABC 57 yesterday that the boy was playing on this playground before it all happened. Today, some parents are wondering if it could have been prevented. Certainly if I leave my children in the hands of a daycare. I expect them to be watching them. I expect them to have employees who know how to do CPR, who um, are certified and, and to, to make sure that they're up on all their licensing from the state as well. Patina Winston is the mother of two, soon to be three. She says she has never used a daycare and only trusts her family to care for her children. But Winston says not everyone has that luxury. You put your trust in people and you think that, you know, your, your children are taken care of. And so, I mean, things happen, uh, unfortunately, and, you know, no one's promised today or tomorrow. And tonight, she says her heart goes out to the parents of the child who lost their son at such a young age. It's, it's hard when you lose a child. And so, you know, all you can do is just pray for the family and ask God to just, you know, to just heal them. Now, I have been in touch with officials from the Family and Social Services Administration today. Find out why they tell me this daycare behind me is under investigation tonight, all new at 6. Reporting live in Michigan City, Emily Evans, ABC 57 News. And we're following breaking news right now out of LaPorte. We are learning within the past half hour about a major gas leak. The city's mayor took to social media saying the leak is just outside of City Hall. Officials there telling people to please, please stay away from Lincoln Way to Harrison and Indiana to Monroe. We will continue to stay on top of this developing story for you. Of course, we'll pass along any new information as soon as it comes into our newsroom. Well, the big weather story here tonight. Rain is on the way overnight. It could get pretty heavy at times. Let's get your first warning right now from ABC 57. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Martin he is tracking from the ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Center. Hey, Chief. Hey, Brian. Yeah, right now we are continuing to watch things across the area. Some rain showers coming through right now. The good news is no thunderstorms as of yet. Might pick up just a few by very late tonight, especially during the day on Wednesday. So some rain showers right now beginning to move their way through Berrien County. Also heading over towards Cass County right now, right along 12. It's heading off towards the northeast. Marcellus 542, Lawton 603. Expect some brief heavy rain to be pushing its way through, but plenty more rain just off to our south and southwest that will eventually shift in. Right now temperatures hang out primarily in the low to mid 70s. We're going to stay right there in the low to mid 70s, dropping into the upper 60s by 10 p.m. So rain showers on the increase for the overnight hours. I'll time them out for your neighborhood with forecast track coming up in just a few minutes. Brian. And right now ABC 57 News staying on top of developing information out of Elkhart. Late this afternoon, we learned that Thermodyne Corporation is being investigated by the feds. The company makes insulation is being investigated by DCIS, which is a branch of the Department of Defense. ABC 57's Marissa Kiniston is following this story for us right now. So have a full report tonight on ABC 57 News at 10 and after the game. New at 5, we are following up on Monday's big drug bust. 10 convenience stores in South Bend, Mishawak, and Elkhart were all served search warrants. The stores were suspected of selling synthetic marijuana. The investigation resulted in 20 arrests. It's a story we first started looking into eight months ago when ABC 57's Erla Bajoris went undercover to expose this very issue. ABC 57's Daryl Bajoris has been covering this story now for months, even going undercover himself. And Daryl joins us now live from the Elkhart County Prosecutor's Office with the very latest today. And Daryl, you were on the scene yesterday as those busts were going down. Today you found out who was arrested. That's right, Brian. Here in my hands are the documents showing some of the charges that the prosecutor wants to apply to some of these business owners and employees, some of which are pretty serious, including felony charges of racketeering, part of why the investigation took so long in the first place. This is Ricky Singh. A lot better than that. He lied to us. We busted his business partner for selling synthetic weed in November, and he promised to have a talk with him to stop peddling this poison. Eight months later, though, police raided a store along with nine others in St. Joseph and Elkhart counties 
Those raids resulted in the arrest of nearly two dozen employees. What we really have here is not just somebody selling a little bit of drugs. We have a criminal enterprise. Elkhart County Prosecutor Curtis Hill says the investigation started last July when neighbors complained about illegal activities at convenience stores. His office, along with various state and federal agencies, went to work sees more than $57,000 and 1,400 packets of synthetic drugs, and they're just getting started. We cannot, as a community, as communities, allow for people to profit by selling substances that are killing our youth and destroying our futures. But here's the thing, there's no law or even city ordinance to keep the shops from opening back up after the police investigation is over. The only thing that will stop it is the, the financial effects. Which is why Carl Nichols and other community leaders want a real policy change. That is, get busted selling something illegal and you're no longer eligible for a business license. They'll stop for a few months and then when they think that there's no more pressure on them or no one watching, they'll start it again. So I asked both county prosecutors about what they were doing to petition lawmakers to create that change. They tell ABC 57 News they want tighter restrictions but can only enforce current laws. I think the deterrent effect is going to be taking these folks out of business and charging whatever we can appropriately charge going forward rather than waiting for any other legislative fix or any legislative change. Now, all 10 of those convenience stores in St. Joseph and Elkhart counties will remain closed until a court order says otherwise. I'm told that is still months away, but it's still unclear what exactly happens after that. Of course, we'll stay on top of it. Reporting live in Elkhart County, Daryl Bajora, CBC 57 News. All right, Daryl, as always, good job for us, and we appreciate it. Well, it is game on at Notre Dame right now. Hundreds of women are about to learn football basics from the very best. Football 101 just kicked off a few minutes ago. Let's get right out to my co-anchor, Kim Chappell. She is going to give it her best shot again this year. And Kim, you learned last year it is not as easy as it looks. Definitely not, Brian. I tried to give a kick last year, my first punt, and I tell you what, it was tricky. It was pathetic at best, but it definitely gives you an idea of what those players have to go through and how well they perform in front of thousands of people on the field. Now, as you can see next to me behind me here, these women are all getting registered, signed up. It's the sixth annual Football 101. We've got about 600 participants in this year's event. Great, great turnout. They're all about to get one of these pink bags, a little bit of a goodie bag here. Give you a sneak peek inside. We've got a a little bit of a hat, a water bottle, this nice pink football. And as you can see, this year we are indoors. We're at the Loftus Sports Center. If you want to take a look behind me here, it's okay, ladies. We're indoors this year, but we're not going to let that rain on our parade because this is all about breast cancer awareness, prevention, and detection, a cause that is near and dear to Brian and Poppy Kelly's heart. And we're about to catch up with them right now, do a quick interview. We're going to bring you that part of our coverage here live at Football 101 coming up in the 90 minutes of news. Brian, back to you. All right, Kim, appreciate it. Well, parents and kids will get the chance to check out all the different animals and zoo has to offer with a special walking course. We stopped by the zoo earlier today to talk with them about their partnership with Komen this year. They say they are very, very excited and something to keep in mind this year. No pets will be allowed in any of the races. It is our first year with the animal art project. Um, it is our second year with a partnership with the zoo as part of our race for the cure. Oh, the flamingos are getting loud. It's <laughs> um, part of our race for the cure this Saturday. This is really good for the animals because it's just something different that they they don't get. Um, when when you put animals in captivity, you take a lot of their natural um, things from them. So we try to provide stimulation for them in different ways to kind of bring those things back. And race for the cure this Saturday, 9 o'clock at Pottawatomie Park. Well, tonight, the latest in a high school shooting in Oregon. One student and the shooter is dead, a teacher injured. The shooting happened this morning near Portland. Just ahead, we will take you ground level inside the investigation. You will hear from frantic students who describe those very frightening moments. And right now, things getting a little bit damp in some locations. We are talking about a little bit of light rain across the area. More rain beginning to develop here just to the south of Winnemac. It's all moving its way northward, heading into Madaryville at 546, North Judson at 603. More tracking coming up. Plus, back in court, we will take you to the very latest court appearance for killer Michael Elliott. And all new at the bottom of the hour, ABC 57 News at 530. A tragic and deadly mistake. U.S. forces drop a bomb in the wrong spot in Afghanistan. Stay with us on ABC 57 News as we continue to learn more details about what could be the worst friendly fire accident in 14 years.